Hi guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel, Ninets. My name is Amy and today we have a knitting podcast and it's episode number 10. Okay, so today's episode marks the official last episode that I will be counting out episode numbers on my hands, so very exciting. If you're new here, welcome. I post podcasts every two weeks. They are knitting focused where I talk about my finished objects, if I have any, my works in progress, show you guys what I'm working on, and if I have any new yarn to show you guys, I do that as well. So today is, you know, a regular podcast episode, gonna be doing all those things that I just mentioned. Have two finished objects to share with you guys. You'll notice the first one that I'm wearing. So this is my Oversized Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. I am super happy to have finished this, and I might be lying when I say it's a finished object because I have finished all of it except for adding buttons. So you might notice the little tassel here I just have marked where I'm going to put my buttons I have not purchased buttons for it yet but I have finished knitting and did block this cardigan so let's talk about it so this is the oversized seasons cardigan by Ozetta it is a all-over half fisherman's rib raglan cardigan it's knit top down flat you do knit the button band at the same time as the body so you don't have to go and do that at the end it has one by one ribbing accents at the cuffs the button band and the bottom edge of the cardigan and I knit this on five millimeter needles with Lana Grossa Cool Merino, which is a 90% merino wool and 10% nylon yarn. It's a chain construction yarn, so it's very light. You get a lot of volume with not a lot of weight. Um, very fluffy, very squishy. This is the color gray. Um, it's pretty much just a plain gray, but it does have a lot of sort of heathering or like variation within the color, which I really like. It added a lot of depth to the knit piece and to the fisherman's rib texture. This is half fisherman's rib, which is very slow growing. And half fisherman's rib and regular fisherman's rib, you knit into the row below, which sort of compresses your rows and therefore it takes more rows to create the same amount of length that it would take with a stockinette stitch, less rows. So that was one of the reasons why this took me so long. I started this in September. I was expecting it to be a fall project and I kind of expected to be wearing it throughout the fall, winter, and even spring now, but we're all the way into April and I just casted this off this week. Super happy to finally have this off the needles. A lot of you guys said that you've been very excited that I finally finished it. So thanks guys for that sort of emotional support. I didn't realize so many of you were rooting for me to finish this, but was really happy to hear that for both you and for me, it was a big success to finally get this off the needles. I would say this project started strong. You know, it was a pretty fun cast on piece. You create the back neck of the button band first and you pick up stitches from there. So it's kind of a fun, engaging beginning construction. And then you get into the raglan increases. And once you finish those, you just knit the body and sleeves like a regular raglan. And I would say I had a lot of steam Starting it, like I was pretty energized, got through the, most of the raglan increases pretty quickly. I was getting close to the end of the raglan increases and I thought the sizing was weird. I forget which podcast it was in, but it was a while ago where I was talking about, I wasn't sure if the raglan increases were enough. Like I was trying to drape it over my shoulders and it just didn't look like it was going to fit well. So at that point in time, the sweater sort of entered a period of hibernation just cause I was kind of discouraged with the sizing. And then I picked it back up again. This was maybe like midwinter and I separated for the sleeves, had some more energy again to work on it. Got maybe like a couple inches of the body done. It took me way longer than I expected to get those few inches of the body done. So with that discouragement, the sweater went back into hibernation. And yeah, starting late winter, I had the motivation again to pick it up and sort of finish the body. I knew that getting through the body was gonna be the biggest obstacle for me to overcome. So I just pushed through, finished the body. And then after that, the sleeves were like, they flew by. I finished the sleeves in maybe a couple days each and 
Yeah, so that was sort of my journey with this cardigan from September until now in April. In terms of the fit, I am loving it. It is perfectly oversized. It fits just like I would expect it to fit based on the pattern photos. I did make a size small and I will put my measurements in the description below if you need that for a reference. This has a lot of ease. Like you can see there's like a lot of free flowing fabric, which is exactly what I wanted. It's the perfect length, the sleeve length, is perfect as well and yeah it's super warm like I'm already sweating in this right now <laughs> so Ozetta does have two seasons cardigans patterns there is the regular seasons cardigan and then this is the oversized seasons cardigan I have not knit the seasons cardigan I know it's also really popular I think it's more popular than this oversized seasons cardigan so I figured I would take a look at both of those patterns and sort of look at the statistics of you know gauge yarn and all that to sort of compare the two and share that with you guys. So this oversized seasons cardigan uses a 15 stitch by 30 row gauge for four by four inches or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and that's in the half fisherman's rib on five millimeter needles. This cardigan does have seven inches of positive ease within the finished product. That's the recommended ease from the pattern. And it also calls for a worsted weight yarn. Now for the seasons cardigan it is also a worsted weight yarn pattern. However the gauge is 17 stitches by 36 rows in four inches for half fisherman's rib and that is also on five and a half millimeter needles so a little bit tighter of a gauge but you do have a bigger needle size and the finished product only calls for about four inches of positive ease maybe the oversized seasons cardigan mostly is called oversized because it has a lot more ease than the seasons cardigan but if you're looking between those two patterns i would say i think the finished result is about the same like the fit the style it looks pretty similar if you want a more oversized fit you can definitely size up to increase that positive ease again i think it depends on what yarn you're using in the needles and definitely gauge swatch with the half fisherman's rib because the stitch counts and bro counts are going to be way different than just normal stockinette. I know a lot of knitters kind of know their gauge depending on if they work on the same sort of weight yarn and needles often like I knit DK weight sweaters a ton on four millimeter needles and I sort of know my average gauge if I'm using a similar like merino wool yarn so sometimes I won't gauge swatch if I know that the pattern calls for that gauge that I've already met in other sweaters, but for this, with the stitch pattern and the yarn, I would definitely gauge swatch. Did I meet that gauge with this sweater? Let's find out. If I was prepared, I would have done this before I filmed, but I'm gonna do this now. <laughs> so let me see how my stitches add up for the gauge. All right, so I just counted 16 stitches in four inches, which is a little bit smaller of a gauge than the 15 stitches per four inches. Let's look at rows now. Okay, I think I just counted 40 rows per four inches. Okay, I did not meet gauge at all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that, but it fits great regardless. I think my gauge swatch, the I knew that in my gauge swatch, the stitch count was pretty accurate. You know, I'm counting 16 now and the pattern calls for 15. I think I was pretty close in my gauge swatch for stitches. I knew it was gonna be a lot more rows to hit the four inches just based on my gauge swatch, so I'm not surprised. I did take account for that in my knitting of the body length. In the pattern, she does give a amount of rows, like a number count between each buttonhole as well as a measurement, about four inches between each buttonhole. In my knitting, I knew that I wasn't hitting that at four inches with the amount of rows that she called for. So I did have more rows between each buttonhole to create that four inch length, which is probably why it also took me a lot longer than I was hoping just because I needed to knit more rows to hit that. Um, so that was my gauge for this sweater. So yeah, this is my oversized season cardigan. I did say before I didn't purchase buttons for it yet. Not really sure what kind of buttons I want. I feel like black would look nice, but I also could be convinced that sort of like a mother of pearl white or even like a tortoise brown would look good. I can't really decide in my head, I'm gonna have to bring this cardigan to the store and sort of lay the buttons on them to see what I like the best, but I think it's gonna be really fun to pick out the buttons. There's only four buttons on here. I don't remember the diameter that is called for, probably about an inch, like pretty large buttons. So they will be a focal point of the cardigan when it's finished. And then at that point I can call this a 
truly finished object, <laughs> but right now I'm calling it 99% done if you use Ravelry. My project page for this says 99% in terms of progress. So yeah, this is it. I am really warm right now, so <laughs> I had to take that off. I was planning on wearing it for the whole episode, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. So cardigan's off. If it pops back on later on, maybe I got cold, but right now it had to come off. So my next finished object is a pattern also by Ozetta, and that is the town sweater. Here it is. Show it off like this. So this is the town sweater. It is a bottom up drop shoulder sweater in worsted weight yarn. I knit this with Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted in the color Crane Heather, used five millimeter needles and made the size small. This is part of sort of a mini informal knit along that I did with my friends. We all knit the same sweater together with the same yarn, but different colors. And it's been really fun. Was super happy to do this because it was pretty mindless knit. You know, it's all stockinette with the bottom up construction that was a little bit new to me and I talked about before how it's not my favorite construction but I think the end result is really pretty. This sweater blocked out really nicely. All the stitches I think look really even and crisp. The fabric has some nice drape and flow. It's like a 100% Peruvian wool. So it does have that very wooly feel, very cozy. I have worn this already. I wore it last Sunday all day and it did start out a little bit itchy, but as the day went on, it got less itchy. Like I think the initial like putting it on around like the back of my neck was like itchy, but then I don't know, it got better. So definitely a cozy wear. I pretty much followed the pattern as written. Some modifications that I did was I dropped down a needle size for the ribbing. The pattern does call for the same needle size as the body knitting as the ribbing, but I wanted to go down a needle size just to keep my ribbing sort of neat. And I don't regret that. I think it turned out pretty good. I was a little concerned about the ribbing, like cinching at the sleeves and at the cuffs just because, or at the bottom of the sweater, um, because the overall sweater is supposed to be very boxy and as I was knitting it, the ribbing was super cinched up, but a nice blocking really opened up the ribbing. I think it looks pretty good. It's pretty like in line. Like I don't really see any cinching anymore. There's just, just the slightest dip, but I can't really notice it when I'm wearing it. And I overall really like the fit of this. I'd say it's a good length, like my usual length, like hits right above the hips for me. The sleeve length is nice and long, comes past the wrist, very cozy. The mock neck color, I did also make an adjustment. It is supposed to be three inches long, but I knit it to about two and a half inches long just cause I think I have a short neck and I find some other knits that I have where the collar is really tall. It either like hits the bottom of my like chin and then bunches or it's just like uncomfortable to wear. So I really like the length of this collar. You know, it does sort of come down and it stands up pretty nicely. I think the color is very flattering. The heathering and the yarn is really showing well in the plain stockinette sweater. For gauge, the gauge called for in the pattern on five millimeter needles with worsted yarn is 17 stitches by 28 rows. So I counted about 17 and a half stitches per four inches and about 28 rows for the four inches. So yeah, I feel like I hit gauge pretty well. Um, knowing that, so I knit the size small and I feel like it's not big enough. When wearing it, I do have a lot of like bunching around the underarms. Like I feel like this drop shoulder doesn't come out wide enough for me. So that's something like interesting to note for the pattern. Like if I were to knit this again, I would size up to a medium just to get that more boxy fit. One thing with drop shoulders I really don't like is that possible bunching at the underarm. And if it's not like a very wide body, it may just look a little bit like awkward, like you get this sort of like weird shape around your underarm into your chest. So yeah, if I were to have one qualm with the sweater, it would be that it's just not boxy enough on me. And knowing that I hit gauge pretty closely, then I would take that into consideration if you were to knit this pattern to possibly size up if you do want that really loose flowy fit. But yeah, really pleased with the town sweater. I might get a few more wears out of it before it gets too warm, but who knows, this might have to sit until next fall to get some true wearing out of it. I am a little worried about pilling with this yarn just cause 
Um, there's no mohair in this. You know, it's 100% wool and it's not the tightest spun um, wool yarn. So I feel like it could pill, but nothing that a shaver can't fix. Would definitely use this yarn again. I thought it was a great value for the price. And like I said, it was a little itchy at first, but I feel like as the day went on and the fibers warmed up to my body, it was not as itchy as I wore it. There's my town sweater. Two finished objects in one podcast that are both sweaters or cardigans and sweaters. Very rare for me, but I think because I started that other cardigan all the way back in September, you know, it just caught up to now. Don't normally pump out garments this quickly. I would say it takes me about a month and a half to do a sweater and I'm not a monogamous knitter. So that would be while doing other projects at the same time. I did start the town sweater. I looked it up. I started on February 17th, finished it on March 20th. So that was about one month exactly of knitting. So my next work in progress is the Oopbot cardigan. So this cardigan is a pattern that was from Istex magazine. I am knitting this in Alifos Lopi, which is the bulky weight Icelandic wool from Lopi. I'm knitting this as part of a knitting class at my local yarn store. There's been two sessions so far. We have one more third session going through all of the process and different steps that might be encountered on this cardigan that are new. For me, a lot of new things are involved. Like I don't do color work very often. This is a bottom up cardigan, so I did work the body first bottom up and then I did both the sleeves separately bottom up and then if you watch the last podcast I talked about how I had to join them all in the round and then now I'm working on the yoke of the cardigan. So I am making this in a size medium. This pattern doesn't have a whole lot of sizes. The medium seemed like it would fit me the best. I think it's going pretty well. I think it looks really good on camera. I'm looking at it and that color work is really popping. It's sometimes hard to see when you're working like row by row with the color work. Like you can't really see the full pattern until you like put it down and step back and you're like, ah, I see it now. But it's been a lot of fun. I have been enjoying the color work, although it is a slower process than my normal knitting, it's really fun to see that pattern emerge and just sort of go row by row following the chart, especially with the yoke part where you have like the decreases thrown in there. I think it's been really engaging. So I did say that this is a cardigan and you can see that it's being knit in the round. So I will be sticking this cardigan. I am trying to finish knitting the body like as quickly as possible because I wanna get started on the steaking process. There are a few steps involved with what needs to be done before, during, and like after the steaking, all before my next session at the yarn store. So I do have to finish the yoke. So you can see I've done some decreases just following the chart and eventually it'll decrease, you know, up to the collar and down the middle here, can you guys see there are two purl stitches that are part of the knitting pattern that have been going like the whole way. So this is where I will be steaking or cutting the cardigan after reinforcing it with a sewing machine. So with that being said, I need to finish knitting and then I do have to do some Kitchener at the underarm. So because this is bottom up, I, I've never done bottom up like in the round before that's not like a drop shoulder, like the town sweater, but I think this is pretty standard with bottom up in the round where you have like this big gap at the underarm and you have the Kitchener stitch these together before you block it. Cause it's like the same process where you have like a raglan and you separate for sleeves. But when you go to do the sleeves, you pick up some body stitches that were cast off before. And because you don't have that when you're working bottom up, instead of picking up stitches, you have to Kitchener them. So I do have to do that with both underarms. Yeah, once I do that, I'll be able to block this. I'm really excited to block it because I think it's really gonna flatten out the color work, sort of even out the floats in the back. So you can see all of my floats back here, definitely improving over time. Like um, the bottom was the very beginning that I did. And I can tell that there's like a lot of improvement with like my tension and the color work and just paying attention to making sure the floats aren't too big or aren't too tight as well. So blocking will sort of help flatten this all out. I'm going away next week and I'm trying to finish this before I go away in terms of knitting it. So we'll see if that happens. As soon as I finish filming this podcast, I'm gonna be sitting down to knit away. Luckily, because of the circular yoke, it is decreasing. So every row gets faster. So that's pretty fun. 
Um, you can see here as I'm holding it up, it's pretty big. I am a little worried about the sizing. There was not a whole lot of direction on like how much ease that the cardigan should have. And there wasn't a lot of, there's no schematic of like distance from the underarm to the end of the sleeve or like distance from the hem to the top of the cardigan. So I picked my size thinking that it had a right amount of ease for my bust, but as I'm knitting it, I'm like, this is, this is huge. Like I'm like trying to visualize where this yoke is like ending up. Like, is this yoke here? Is it here? It's pretty unclear. And I wasn't really able to figure that out. So I have a feeling that these sleeves are going to be too long. I don't know, but this is, this was sort of like an experimental project, like definitely a process knit and not a product knit. Although I am looking forward to being able to wear this cardigan next winter. It definitely, I wanted to knit it more for the process and learning the new skills rather than creating like the perfect garment for myself to wear. So yeah, it might be too big, especially the sleeves. I feel like the sleeves are going to be really long, but all that being said, I'm enjoying this knit. It's totally different from what I'm used to. I definitely have an interest in more color work in the future, although maybe not regularly. This has been knitting up really fast because it's on six and a half millimeter needles. So I would be interested in doing something with more delicate color work, like not bulky weight yarn, but maybe DK weight or I don't know if I would go down to fingering weight, but you know, something smaller at a smaller gauge I think would be really fun to do again next winter. So yeah, this is Upot. On my next podcast episode, I will have finished steaking this. So I'm going to do a whole lot of filming and documenting my whole process there so I can share with you guys how it went. So you can look forward to that in a about two weeks, maybe more than two weeks. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is my Upot cardigan. My next project is new. I just casted this on and this is my very first Muscleboro hat. The pattern's by Isolde Teague. It is pretty famous in the knitting world. It's this top down double layered beanie. So you actually start at the crown, you knit top down, you do this really long knit tube and then you do decreases for the other end of the crown. So then you can invert the hat on itself and have a double layered beanie that could be reversible depending on how you knit it. I've been wanting to cast this on for a while. I've seen a ton of people make it on YouTube and on Instagram, and it just seems like a really fun, mindless knit. People advertise it as being a great on the go knit because once you get past the initial crown, you're just knitting in the round for with stockinette stitch endlessly. So I am going away next week. So I wanted a travel friendly project. So I casted this on. The yarn I'm using is Dirty Water Dye Works, which is a Boston based yarn dyeing company. And this is their Lucia fingering weight, which is 75.25. You get 464 yards per one skein. It's a four ply yarn. And this is the color Sprinkles. It's this beautiful like cream white base with speckles of purple, blue, and sort of like a yellowy green. So this is the knit fabric. Really cute. Been loving the speckles. Um, this is the kind of yarn that I wanted to use in a hat because I wouldn't really wear this in a garment, but it's super fun to knit with and I can totally wear this in a beanie. So yeah, I've heard the Muscleboro pronounced two different ways. Some people just call it Muscleberg, other people call it Muscleboro. I've been calling it Muscleboro, so I'll probably keep calling it Muscleboro. Although I think like the American pronunciation is just Muscleberg, um, but <laughs> yeah, so I had a little bit of a debacle starting this hat. So one of the aspects of the pattern is that it's like, you don't need to do a gauge swatch for it. You just start knitting. And then once you have enough fabric to measure your gauge, you then follow a chart within the pattern that tells you the stitch counts for the gauge that you measured. And there's a whole variety of stitch counts that you can meet. So it's kind of like a gaugeless pattern or any gauge pattern. Those are like opposite terms. It's like a pattern for any gauge. The pattern works for fingering weight through DK weight yarn. And because there's like no specific gauge for the pattern, there's no specific needle size for the pattern. They kind of ask you to pick any needle size asking that if you're using a sock yarn to pick a needle size that's bigger than what you would use for socks. So 
I didn't really do a whole lot of research. I just briefly skimmed a few Ravelry projects and saw that people who were using fingering weight yarn, at least the projects that I had browsed, use size US2. So I went out to the yarn store, purchased some US2 needles, both the long one for Magic Loop for the crowns and a 16 inch circular for the main body. So I had gotten through the crown and was ready to measure my gauge and I was hitting a gauge of about nine and a half stitches per inch. And if I stretched it maybe a little bit, like flattened out the fabric more, I kind of hit nine stitches per inch. Now nine stitches per inch is the smallest gauge that the pattern has written instructions for. So knowing that I was at nine and a half, truly, I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work. And then on top of it, there is also a great chart for yardage requirements and how much yardage of yarn you will need depending on the gauge you're hitting. So for my size hat, I'm doing the adult medium. If I were to knit at the nine stitches per inch gauge, I would need 500 yards of yarn to make the beanie and I just don't have that in my single skein of yarn was not willing to buy more So for that reason I frogged it and dug through my needle bin to see if I had a US 3 Which a lot of you guys commented last time I mentioned that I was casting on the muscle burrow You guys mentioned oh I use US 3 so and so uses US 3 so that seemed like the more popular choice Maybe if I had done some more research prior to casting on I would have truly found that a lot of people do use use US3 needles and it works out pretty well for them. So luckily I had some US3 needles already in my needle bin that I don't really go through very often because I have an interchangeable needle set, but I do have a bin of assorted like DPNs and circulars and I had a size US3 16 inch circular. So thank you past Amy for making a project that needed those needles. <laughs> I was trying to remember where I got those needles from or what they were for. And I, I cannot remember for the life of me what I have these needles for, but I had them. So I also had these size US3 DPNs. They are unmarked. I have like a small collection of really old, but really small knitting needles, like small being like size US double zero through US like three or four in uh, like long straight needles as well as these long DPNs. They were passed down to me from my grandmother. So I found these, I do have a little like gauge, knitting needle gauge measure thing, tool, knitting needle gauge tool, I don't know. <laughs> I have those things with the holes and you like stick the needle in and it tells you what size it is. So I was like, I really hope these are size threes. So I measured them and they are size three. So amazingly, I did not have to go out and buy new needles. So I cast it on again, the Muscle Burrow with these DPNs, size US3. I did follow the Tin Can Knits pinhole cast on and I found that tutorial to be very helpful and pretty easy. Like I only had to try to do it like once or redo it once. The cast on was super fiddly because you can see these needles are huge. They're so long and you only start with like eight stitches. So on like three DPNs, you have like a fingering weight, like two stitches on each and then four on the third. So the, these things were flying everywhere. It was so hard to keep my stitches not getting twisted and to keep everything straight. The yarn was tangling up in the ends of the needles. It was so chaotic. I did have to redo it a couple times. And yeah, once I got going, it got better, but it was definitely fiddly and I hated my life at that very moment. But we got through it, we cast it on, we increased enough where it wasn't fiddly anymore. And yeah, finished the crown. So my new gauge with the US3 needles is seven stitches per inch, which is perfect. Fits in the chart of the pattern. It means I have enough yardage of yarn to make the hat. It's not gonna take me as long to make the hat now because the fabric is not as dense. I feel like there was some worry if the stitches would be too loose, but I think because this is double layered, I'm not really gonna have that problem. You can sort of see through the stitches at this gauge, but from far away you can't, and when the fabric is folded up, it's gonna be no problem at all. So yeah, this has been super fun to work on. I've already been working on it while I'm working, like if I'm in Zoom meetings and stuff, it's just really easy to pick up and start working. I can totally see myself making a ton in the future. I love the idea of doing like two different yarns. One half is one color and one half is the other. So you have like a reversible hat with different colors. So that seems really fun. So yeah, I don't really have a deadline for when this is gonna be done. I'm just gonna be working on it when I can, when it's like convenient for me to bring in my purse or when I'm traveling. 
So I will keep you guys updated on this. I did cast on another hat. It was kind of in the in-between where I had gotten through the crown of my muscle burrow on the small needles. We realized it wasn't gonna work. So I was kind of defeated, had put it away for like a day or two, but I still wanted like mindless stockinette knitting. So I cast it on an Oslo hat by Petite Knit. I am using some Pure Gint that I've had in my stash for a while and I've wanted to use this for a hat. This is Pure Gint by Sanis Garn in Petroleum. It's a DK weight, 100% um, Norwegian wool, a little bit on the like rustic-er side compared to like Sanis Garn Sunday, um, but it's been knitting up really nicely. I really don't have much to say about the Oslo hat. I've made it before. It's a pretty nice pattern to follow. Again, mindless stockinette knitting. The petroleum green is really pretty to me. And yeah, I, I don't really, like I said, I don't have much to say. It's an also hat. Again, no deadline for when I want this done. It's just gonna be another like mindless knit or on the go knit. All right, so my next and last work in progress is the Provence sweater. It's part of the Sorella make along or the Sorella spring make along. And I just casted this on on Monday and I'm super excited to be participating in the make along. I got this Surrey lace by Sorella in the color Toile. It's this beautiful pale blue. It's part of their spring tonals collection. So this Surrey lace is a lace weight Surrey silk. I believe the percentage is like 78% Surrey alpaca and then 22% silk. I could be wrong on that, but it, that's around the percentage breakdown of the fibers. Now, this is my first time using Surrey Alpaca Silk. I've used Surrey Nylon before. I didn't really like it. I just don't think it was the highest quality Surrey I could have used. And I sort of like shrugged it off, but Sorella announced their make along. The Provence sweater is this gorgeous circular yoke, top down, all over Surrey sweater. It just looks so like, Fun and it looked really flowy and soft and like different compared to like any other plain wool knit. So I was like, all right, I'll give this a try. I'll, I'll make the commitment. So now that I've received the Surrey silk, I can finally see what all the hype is about. This, this is the softest yarn I have ever felt in my entire life. I don't even know how to describe it in words. Like I, I cannot put into words how soft and fluffy this is. It is so different from mohair. Like I have used a ton of mohair and I've really enjoyed using mohair. And I always thought Surrey was just kind of like an alternative to mohair. I don't think it is. I think this is completely different in a fantastic way. Like I feel like mohair is like, it has hair in the name and mohair feels kind of like hairy in a good way, not in a weird way. But this just feels like a cloud. It feels exactly how it looks. It kind of, the only way I can describe it, and I feel like this is a terrible description, so take it as you will, but it's like, you know when you rip apart like a cotton ball and it's like very like soft and airy and you can like brush it against your skin and it just feels like a feather? I feel like it's that, but in like a way better way. So with all that being said, I am really enjoying this sweater. So it has some I-Core details. So there is a provisional cast on at the beginning. So you can see here that I have just the, some cotton for the provisional cast on. I like doing the crochet provisional cast on. I just crochet a chain with a little bit more than the stitch count for the cast on. And then I just pick up stitches through the back bumps of the crochet chain. And it works out pretty nicely. I don't think it's too difficult or fiddly. And yeah, I'm just going through a few increase rounds for the circular yoke. It's been heavenly. Although the only problem, it's not even a problem, but the only thing I can say is that the fuzz, like the Surrey fibers do get everywhere. And I wear black leggings a lot. So like my black leggings are covered in Surrey right now. But yeah, so not really much to show you guys here because it's just a circular yoke. The pattern is pretty well written. There are short row shaping, which I always appreciate in a pattern. It's on two small needles right now, so you can't really tell that it's like a circular shape, but yeah, I think the color is gonna be really flattering on me, and I also love the color. I would describe it as like a icy blue, and you can't really see it on camera, but there are 
very subtle hints of like lavender purple in here, depending on how you hold it up to the light. It's definitely like a semi-solid color. It's not like a pure solid dye job. So I really like that, it adds some depth. And oh yeah, I didn't mention like the yarn weight and the needle size. So the Surrey Lace is being held double, which would equate to about a fingering weight yarn and I am knitting this on five millimeter needles to hit gauge. I believe the pattern calls for four and a half millimeter needles. So it's a very like big open gauge for the fingering weight yarn, adds to the drape, but of course the Surrey fibers sort of fill in all those gaps. So you don't have like a very like see-through fabric. It's pretty, it, it works pretty well. I really like it. Would definitely use Surrey again. Will be using Surrey again. <laughs> And that's everything I have to share with you guys. Just to let you guys know, I have briefly mentioned I'll be traveling next week, so there will not be a video next week. Or if there is one, it might be late if I can get my act together after I get home, but just gonna put out there that I'll be sort of off schedule. I kind of unofficially have a Monday schedule. You guys probably have noticed, although I haven't like officially announced that I post videos every Monday, I do try to post videos every Monday. So. Again, there may not be a video next week, but thank you guys so much for joining along. And I would ask that if you enjoy my content that you would hit the subscribe button. It does help my channel grow. And if you want more details into what I'm knitting, feel free to follow me on Instagram. The handle is at knee underscore knits. I post a lot more frequently there with my projects and on stories and reels so you get all that good knitting content. So thank you guys for joining. I will see you guys next time. Bye.